Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Still having trouble with my dental work, but we're going to go ahead and look at some ham radio things. Um, I have received and reviewed a couple different EMF field strength meters. Each of them claims to measure the actual field strength. They measure wildly different from each other. So I think that uh, I wouldn't trust either of them. This one is OLMLMO, which is not quite um, a palindrome, but uh, pretty close. We've got this one, we've got this one as an EMF tester. Uh, this comes from Eric Hill. And then I have this. This is a kit. So it has a place for an antenna here. And what we're going to do is take all three and just do a quick bit of comparison with a 2 meter handheld and see how they do. This one comes from QRP Guys. And it's a digital field strength meter. And it measures on the little meter right there. And it is a relative kind of thing. So you can measure two places and say, okay, this place is twice as strong as this one. With this one, we should be able to illustrate the inverse square law on radiation, but uh, which I don't see on either of these. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, I have three... Uh, field strength meters. This is a new one here that I got from QRP guys and it is a relative reading. Okay, So as you add RF that number will go up. This is the Eric Hill and the Ohm Lamo uh, meter. That's a lot of consonants without a vowel. And it's always wandering around like crazy. Note that this and this are set to the same scale, which is milliwatts per meter squared. Okay, that's reading pretty low. This one right here, this is just background noise. Okay, being picked up by this. Now I have here a TID radio, which I have reviewed recently. Okay, and it's set for 10 watts on two meters and five watts on 70 centimeters. Let's try um, 70 centimeters first. Okay, I'm going to put out 5 watts on that and we'll see what happens here. Okay, this goes off scale. This right here is 4 milliwatts per meter squared. Okay, and that's not very much. And this one has gone up to 29 and is holding fairly steady. Now if I move this thing away, um, we should be seeing quite a difference, but we are in a room and the room has all sorts of reflections in it. This is a useless reading right here. It's just full scale, whereas this is just going up to two. This could be zero, two, that's a one, it can be there, but you know, if I let it go off, it goes back to wandering around and uh, not coming up with uh, anything. I can do a sort of a, a peak here. Now let's try this again. Now that's way up there. Okay, let's go back to, to average. All right. Now let's go to two meters. We're going to do that by pressing the A, B button. Okay, so this is two meters, 10 watts. And we turn this on. And this isn't responding at all. Okay, this is responding. This is responding. Let's put it over here so it can come up quite a bit higher. But it still hasn't reached its max or anything like that. And that's with 10 watts coming out right there. Okay, and if you move it further away, of course, it goes down. I do not know why this OMLO MO um, does what it does. It should be showing that there is RF power near, nearby, as these other meters do. Okay, so let's turn that off. Now, I've reviewed these two before, and frankly, 
this one right here seems to me to be very erratic. Uh, this one gives you fairly solid readings and holds them, okay? And uh, don't forget that the uh, when you do RF safety, we will be talking about watts per meter. This is milliwatts per meter squared. Meter squared is the area, okay? So there you have it. We've taken a look at uh, some different signal strength meters. Basically what this one right here, which is a relative signal strength, is useful for is just to be sure that your antenna is producing an output. Now if you want to go to VHF or something like that, outdoors, you can get out uh, different distances from the radio source and see if the inverse square law applies, which it should. I'm not at all sure, however, that this is linear. And these numbers here don't mean anything. They're relative. You have a background radiation, uh, which tends to run about 11, 13, something like that. And then uh, when there is a uh, RF nearby, uh, that'll, that'll go up quite a bit. Okay, so this is relative signal strength. This meter, in my opinion, is pretty close to useless um, because on 144 megahertz, it doesn't measure the radiation at all. It does on um, 440 megahertz. This little Eric Hill meter, which I bought using channel funds, seems to be a pretty good little meter. I mean, it reads consistently uh, every time I use it. Now, it claims that it's reading in an absolute scale, which is uh, milliwatts per square meter. But frankly, um, you need lab instrumentation to do that. You need special receivers, and trying to measure it across the entire radio frequency is a problem. So you have to measure it using a spectrum scope and look at your averages and things like that. Measuring uh, electromagnetic field strength is a bit of an art. Uh, it's not a science. And any meter that claims to measure an absolute level is immediately suspect in my book. Okay, so, um, I mean, they're interesting. You can certainly use them for relative measurements, but I don't know that they are linear, and my experience with them is that they are not. So, there we go. So, that gives you a little bit of an idea. I like this little uh, uh, meter here from uh, QRP guys. I don't know if it's still um, in their catalog or not. I was able to go online and get the instruction manual for it. I think I bought it quite some time ago and just recently have put it together. I'm trying to do a long-term thing of putting together all the kits I have, as I have so many of them. So there you have it. Uh, please uh, hang on a moment and take a look at a chart that has different ways to reach me, also different ways to support this channel, and our list of patrons. And until we next meet, 73.